Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning at Washington University. This is Module 1, Part 2. In this module, we're going to look at a machine learning background and just some of the preliminaries for this course from a machine learning aspect. This is all the information that is at the GitHub repository. You'll find a link to it at the course website. You can also just Google um, the course name and it should take you to my uh, GitHub repository. This is, uh, this information will but all be on module one. The various parts all are at different locations within module one. So some of the resources that you might want for this course are the IBM Data Science Workbench. This is one of the ways that you can execute your applications for this course. I have an entire video showing you how to use the IBM Data Science Workbench if that's how you want to um, run your programs. Python Anaconda, if you want to install this on your own local machine, I also have a video showing you how to do that. More information on Jupyter Notebooks, TensorFlow, we'll use Kaggle later on. That is a form of uh, competitions. We'll run a Kaggle in class competition for this um, course for one of the assignments. And of course, here's a link to the GitHub repository, just the main level of it. First of all, what is deep learning? Deep learning is essentially neural networks. It is using neural networks for machine learning where you give them input and you teach them to make predictions. So as far as what is machine learning overall, you have traditional software development. If you've started out more from a programming background, you'll be familiar with this. You are provided input data and you create program code. You take your input data and you take your program code and you run it through a computer and that produces output. That is traditional software development, at least back-end software development, where you're taking data, you're taking program code, and you're producing output. If you're doing web development, this is just a much tighter cycle where basically the input is very quick from your user and you produce an output, which is a, which is a web page or other graphics that you're sending back to, to the user. Machine learning kind of flips this on its side. So now we have input data and we have the expected output and we send that to the computer and we get actual program code coming back from it. This can also become very iterative. We'll see programs where literally you're giving the computer the AI program input and Maybe it's looking at output, maybe it's not, but it's literally producing data right, right back at you um, as, it's, as it's working with it. So largely, the difference with machine learning program is you have a spreadsheet that perhaps has a decent amount of data on it. You pick one particular column that you want to teach the deep neural network to predict and you provide it with data where you know the output and it learns to produce that output. So later on you can have data where you don't know you don't know what that output is going to be and it will fill it in for you. Now the input doesn't have to be a spreadsheet type data. It can be, uh, it can be images or any other variety of, of thing. The spreadsheet sort of situation that I was talking about, you can see here at the um, predictive modeling. This is a classic data set where you're just giving it four measurements of a particular iris flower and then it's giving you back the, um, uh, the species that it thinks it is. And of course you can do computer vision where it'll tell you if something's an airplane or, um, or other thing and time series. We'll learn all about those as we, um, as we go through this course. There are overall two types of neural network that you will encounter in this course. That is a regression neural network and a classification neural network. Regression and classification are the two high level designations for a neural network or really almost any type of machine learning model, at least for supervised learning. It's very important that you understand the difference of these. In semesters that I've taught this class before, I've seen students trying to set up a regression problem as classification or vice versa. 
The difference is, what is the output from the neural network? Is the neural network trying to assign a numeric value to it? So one of the data sets that we'll play with a lot in the beginning of this course, two of them in particular, one is the classic iris data set where you have four measurements of three different types of iris flower. And the idea is you try to teach the neural network or any machine learning model to classify what type of iris you have based on those four, those four inputs. So that is, that is a classification. You're trying to classify into one or, or into two or more typically classes. Up here, this computer vision problem that, that we're looking at, that is definitely classification. You are trying to, uh, you are trying to pick how many, um, you're trying to pick what, is it an airplane, is it an automobile, is it a bird? And you're giving the neural network all sorts of examples of these. This time series one, you're trying to predict the number of sunspots based on how many sunspots there were over the previous day, the day before, and the day before that. That's, a, uh, that's very much a time series problem, but it is a regression time series. You're trying to predict the number of sunspots that you are going to have the next day. If you were trying to predict the type of weather, maybe like cloudy, sunny, whatever, that would be classification. You're trying to put it into classes. So classification and regression, definitely make sure that you remember the difference between, uh, between those two. And what are neural networks? Neural networks are a uh, type of machine learning model Neural networks have risen and fallen several times in their popularity. Right now, we're very much in a neural network renaissance due to deep learning, which was introduced um, a number of years ago. Neural networks, the four people that you see below are very much the, the luminaries, the, the primary researchers of deep neural networks, and uh, particularly Jeffrey Henton has stuck through them through, the, uh, through their ups and downs. Really, all of the four have. The four people pictured from uh, left to right are Jan LeKern. He is now with um, Facebook and New York University. He, Jan LeKern is really the, uh, the uh, computer vision person. He's done a lot of work, really invented what became the convolution neural network. Jeffrey Henton of University of Toronto and also Google, he created the he created backpropagation, the, the fundamental training technique that we use for neural networks. And then he also came up with a way of training deeper neural networks and published a seminal paper on that that really started the whole revolution of what we now call deep learning. Yashua Bengio is a, a co-author of a very good book about probably the seminal textbook on deep learning. And we will, uh, we will, the, the book is actually free and online. So we'll, we'll take a look at that and I will reference that book a number of times through this, uh, through this course. Andrew Ning, of course, is famous for many uh, online courses and other things that he has created. He uh, formerly uh, from Beidou, he and also Stanford University. He's done a lot of robotics and other applications of, of deep learning. So why deep learning? Deep learning is very similar to some of some other machine learning models that you might have dealt with, like uh, support vector machines, random forest, and gradient boosted machines. There are certain applications that deep learning really shines on that these other areas just can't process as well. In particular, two of those, really three of those, the first two are computer vision and time series. There's special types of neural network, of deep neural network that we will get into, LSTMs and uh, gated recurrent units for time series, and the convolution neural networks for computer vision and even a very, very new type of neural network for computer vision that was really just, uh, just released a few days ago as, I was, as I'm recording this, this video, the capsule neural network. So we will definitely look at 
all three of those uh, types of neural network through this, through this course. Then the third type of uh, area where deep learning really, really shines, this is a, I think this is a somewhat optimistic diagram, but it shows that basically as you increase the amount of data, the performance for deep learning continues to increase. Older algorithms, it tends to increase, and importantly, they tend to outperform deep learning. But once the amount of data gets so large, deep learning tends to keep on learning where the, other, the older platforms have plateaued. This is, a, uh, this is a diagram that I got from Andrew Ning that I've seen, I've seen quoted quite a bit. When you're analyzing diagrams like this, first of all, this is a very theoretical, non-empirical sort of um, uh, diagram. For one thing, the axes don't have labels. You don't know if this is linear scale, logarithmic scale, or anything. I always um, am a little skeptical of diagrams such as that. And then the other thing, too, is it, show, it doesn't show where deep learning plateaus. Believe me, this line does not extend into infinity. So uh, it, it's very convenient on a lot of charts like this. They'll cut it off just before the algorithm that you're trying to, that you're trying to really promote starts to drop off. But overall, this part of the diagram is quite true. As you give it more and more data, deep learning, if you don't have a lot of data, if you're dealing with small data problems, deep learning is not necessarily going to buy you all that much. And we'll see that. I'll show you some simple, very small data examples so that you can just get the neural network working. But then later on in this course, we will deal with bigger and bigger data sets. I won't give you too big of data because I don't, I want you still to be able to run deep neural networks that are able to execute on your actual computer. So Python for deep learning, we are going to deal exclusively with the Python programming language. Python very much is the programming language that seems to have traction for deep learning. Most other packages will, will support Python first and then other languages later. Some other languages that you'll see, one is Lua, which has a very popular programming interface to it called Torch. They recently released Torch on uh, Python. It's called PyTorch. So that's another. It actually looks very similar to the Cura's interface that we're using. Cura's was actually originally based on Torch. For Python, you're going to see TensorFlow, MXNet, Thano, and CNTK. These are three of the, the biggest ones. It was recently announced that Thano, which was sort of the original deep learning package, for quite some time, Thano was releasing zero point whatever and uh, as uh, early versions. They finally released version 1.0 and they've announced that 1.0 will be the last version of Thano. There's, it's a University of Montreal project. There's just enough research being done on these other ones that they really do not, they feel they don't need to continue. Kira's, which is what we're using as a higher level interface into these, is really a, um, it takes these low level compute engines that you have here, like TensorFlow, MXNet. Kira's can switch between TensorFlow and MXNet quite easily. So what I'm teaching you in this course, using primarily Kira's, you can switch out some of these underlying uh, compute engines as, as need be. And Keras, at least at this point, the main author works for Google, so it's very closely aligned with TensorFlow. And here's some references on other popular programming languages. Scala is another language that you that you will definitely see thanks to thanks to Spark. There is another um, fairly popular programming interface, not quite as popular as the Python engines, but it's um, Deep Learning for J. And I have the URL up here if you're if you are interested in going more of the Java route. I do have some information in module one for software installation, how to install uh, Python and TensorFlow. I give you pretty much the instructions there. There's a whole video on this, so I am not going to really talk about it. 
The thing that you will want to look at is these last two lines. The, make sure that you look at the current version of the module so that you're installing TensorFlow, the version of TensorFlow that we're actually using for the current semester. I tend to increase this up each semester so that each semester we're using the version of TensorFlow that is at the very beginning, but Google tends to release several of these through the semester and they will sometimes make changes that will cause um, that will cause me to have to update the course. So not they've settled down a lot since 1.0, but um, so you need to be careful and make sure that you install the version that I am using at least at the beginning of the of the semester. This is the end of part two of module one.